Water. That's the water hitting my front frontal window, which is extremely high. Of course, I'm already completely flooded out. That's my kitchen window that water is hitting, and that has to be uh, a minimum of about 20 feet off the ground. And this is the water by my back door and glass that came from the canal. That's that height has to be about 20 to 25 feet above sea level. So, this is what I'm facing at the moment. And I have neighbors that are in a far worse position than me and my family. That's my bedroom. And the way it's hitting there, that is over 15 feet uh, from the ground. concerned now that um, because the water is about eight feet up and as you see there it is at our landing which gives us only about another seven feet to go and we're not at high tide yet and I pray certainly that uh, my neighbors who had planned on staying that they didn't stay uh, because they are in a house that is a normal house our house is Built on stilts, the house is 15 feet up. And 
this will most likely be my last broadcast as my batteries are... I have to preserve some of the battery. But if anyone's decided to stay home, um, I don't know. It would be very difficult, hard to imagine them being able to leave with lives intact. It's, it's, this is really rough. And we just pray that it will speed up and just go on its way. kudos, I have to give kudos to BTC for having their network up so that I can actually do this and so we can communicate with each other. Just pray for us that the water does not rise up anymore. So you can see there from our rear stairs how the water is just battering because you got the wind and the water together. is about eight feet up. Looks like a, some, some wood floating from probably from the construction project that the shipping container that went floating by came from. I'll upload that, I did that as a separate video. Hey Danny, I see ya. Be happy you're not here. <clears throat> well, Janet Aubrey, I see you there. This is what you left behind. I see Candace Porter on here too. Uh, no, you don't have this in Chicago. You left all this behind. But you do have super cold winters. <clears throat> I'm guessing that we may end up with water doesn't reach the point where it's going to pour over, it's going to come up from underneath.
wide open and dump an additional 60 water inside the house. My stairs is being bombarded with uh, furniture, so I'm uncertain how long that will hold. that are in a far worse position than me and my family. That's my bedroom. And the way it's hidden there, that is okay. Stairs is being bombarded with uh, furniture, so I'm uncertain how long that will hold. First 
spearhead. Oh my 
goodness. That little restaurant was there. That gone. You can't even get it. You got boats across. Boats across. Yeah, the church. The church gone. The church gone. It's a boat. They sure it was on the water. Behind. Car damage. There's a massive exodus out of Freeport right now. Uh, the United States of America granted uh, people in Grand Bahama, the Bahamas. If you don't have a visa but a valid police record, they would allow you entrance into the country. And my brother, from 4 a.m. this morning, my son and his wife and kids were out there, um, I just had the most task of telling my grandson why I can't come, and he didn't want to let me go. So I tell him, Papa, coming. This is what's going on in Grand Bahama. You have at least 4,000 people trying to get out of this. The mail boat, train the mail boat, and the celebration is just, it's just really bad to right now. All is well, God bless. And from that car to the next car to survive those 16 hours, this has been real. People think it's a game. This thing was real. We have um, um, a lot of dead bodies. I don't think the news wants y'all to know, etc. and whatnot. I don't know, but they're trying to hide. Oh, what not is stupid to hide out. I don't care what they say. If they try to say it's right, that's gonna break up from what people saying dead bodies. But people died over here. Plenty. I understand that some people saying we have to the count was 300 yesterday or more. People have died and suffered here in Africa. I don't want y'all to be deceived by what the news are saying or what they're feeding y'all. They have not been feeding the people here four times a day, like they said. We have to fight and go to the breaking, the broke down um, convenience stores and grocery stores. And rash for food, but it's rash. People rashing for food and water today. I'm out of water. Basically, we scavenging around here. I don't know what the government talking about and what they doing. I tell you one thing. Like I said, thank God, Minister Darren Enfield. He's around with the people, ex people, etc. And from that car to the next car, to survive for 16 hours. They right now they pulling dead bodies from all over the place in Marshaba. Everything is fully destroyed in the Marshaba. You know, houses down, buildings down. There's a uh, cargo ship sitting in the back of the bank. That's how much water surge they had over there. You talked about having to help. About how many bodies you've been estimated that you've helped? Pull? Well, they they had a they had a church uh, uh, fort that fell down with I think about 300 people was inside the church that collapsed. So right now there there's a no real count of the bodies. What what right now in Abaco? Every house right now in Abaco. There's not one house in Mashaba that is standing. There's not one absolute building that is standing. All the churches are gone. All the gas stations are gone. All the food stores are gone. All the schools are gone. All the homes are gone. Not literally just saying it to say it. Everything is absolutely gone. There is no life in Abaco, period. The whole island got washed away. Places where you know that were standing, you can't even tell whether that this place was standing here, what used to exist on this piece of block. Nothing is there anymore. When you walk the town, all the bushes are brown. You, bodies, all the, I mean, they have people there trying to find bodies, but so many buildings collapse on top of people. The odor, the scent, everywhere is polluted. Dead bodies everywhere, dead animals, gas. Michelle, you see this water, yeah? The water over there darker than that. Gas. Whatever you could think about is polluting the water. People looping up, up, people 
people breaking into the food stores, what is left of the food stores, trying to find food, canned items, they taking these things or contaminated what I know, because the people I was living in was doing it, bringing the food, pe- the children, them getting sick, they need to try and evacuate every single living thing off that island, they don't need nobody there, I don't care what they're talking about, clean up, they need, no, they need to do that themselves, they need to take all the children, all the people off the island, everybody, that place is not nowhere for no one to be at the moment. Absolutely destroyed. Absolutely destroyed, Aunt Michelle. When you walk into town, just to see. I, I can't even. I can't. I, I've been there for three years. And Avoco just. Just seeing what it was. Serana, you may get you home. And just seeing you, what it was. And, and, and I can't stop. And we had the move. On. Oh, I, the I, storm, the storm moving. Kids getting woke up. We had to go and day on car day on. Crate, people house in the middle of the road, they don't have to come out the car, move crate to get us to where we was. I could feel the car shaking, getting ready to lift up me and I didn't leave in the car, screaming, hollering for him to get back in the car so the car wouldn't fucking go flying away with us. When we reached by my friend, her mommy bathroom, had a, her, only thing happened to her mommy two story, her bathroom, roof, upstairs, fell in and the kitchen in the back. But when the, the tail part of the storm came, the surge came into our house up to the second story. We had to take all the children and put them upstairs. I sit on the stairs and just pray the whole time that that water didn't cover that house because people two story house was covered in water. Where the hell I gonna put my children? No life vest, nothing. And they had babies in the house younger than him. Were they, were they scared? Like they, did they, know? they cried the whole time. All the children were scared. Everybody knew what was going on. As young as they were, they know it was something drastic happening. Yeah, we're going on. Anyway, Michelle, this was enough. But what I I need to sit down in front of the news and see what took place in Abaco, because that couldn't just been a hurricane. Yeah, been it wasn't just a hurricane that been tornadoes. The way people's homes are destroyed and me living in this Bahamas, I done been through a category five hurricane right there in South Beach by Jam. I have never seen nothing like that. That was just not that was not only a hurricane. When I went back home to where we were staying, I couldn't believe it. If you just stayed in there. <laughs> it's a good thing you there. I packed one little bag. Chris, Chris, Chris. She stayed by her mommy. Oh, they yeah, they don't want to leave the island. They don't want to take off to leave. And the island is polluted. Her niece already in there with a high fever. Every day they go and open town, bringing back these things or the contaminated water where you could smell them. I passed three dead bodies the first day when I decided to, after the water died down, because water was through the town up to your chest. I say I'm not getting sick. I tell it that my skin started to break out and all. I say I can wait till the water died down. You walk and you can see the dead bodies. Bodies everywhere, everywhere you ride, you could smell it. They have a whole, um, what they call it, the truck with the bed on the back. They have some people flat bed. They have some people dressed in white with the mask. Mm-hmm. And twenty of them just riding around looking for dead bodies right now as we speak. That's only the set in the open. And that's only the set in the open. Because every single house I pass from where I live, every house I pass is collapsed. Or, or, or you don't even know that there was a house there. The whole house is gone, break down. Like Aunt Michelle, this shit is like shit you see happening in Haiti. In the movies? Because I. Everyone I know. Just like a nightmare. I never ever thought I would have ever expect I just thank God I alive. My friend Ajane. I don't even know if she alive. She might be dead.
apartment. Oh my God, Angie, the window. Customs and immigration, international, gone. As you can see, US departures over there, gone. Airport, gone. as many of you would be aware of. But I had to come on today because I am very upset and very angry of the misinformation that has been sent out uh, to the Bahamian people uh, or persons who had no idea of the hell that we went through in Abaco. I lost my home, with, came out with only the clothes on my back as many Abaconians have and the truth of the matter is is that there is no gas stations in Mashaba there is no port there is no power um, and there the power the power grid and I've worked for BPL for over 25 years the power grid and the distribution system in Mashaba has totally been destroyed and so the hopes of restoring power anytime soon there is impossible there is no food stores, there is no hardware stores, there are no banks. The only thing that we did to survive over the last several days was scavenge through food stores trying to pick up tuna fish cans or corned beef cans or water and whatnot. And there is no help. I am very frustrated and upset at the government because we received no help. Thank God for the Americans that came in through Treasure Key, bringing uh, 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 plane loads of stuff after stuff. Now I've been made to understand that our government has stopped the planes from coming in, and only God knows how those persons are going to get any kind of help or supplies. You could not even get on Bahamas Air. We paid $75. My son, my wife, and my youngest boy, my son, my wife, and myself, $75 per person or Bahamas Air was not allowing you to get on the plane. Thank God for Western Air that came to deliver some stuff and they decided that they were going to carry as much people as they can and they did it for free. They did it for free. And our government a, a, a help had Bahamas Air charge us $75 to get over here in the Bahamas. My God, something is definitely wrong with that. 
most of my oh most of the churches are destroyed treasure key is destroyed and there are people who are in abaco that may not have been affected as badly as we have been in in in, in central abaco and the people in south abaco has not been affected as badly as we've been that that they don't have any idea how how terrible it is the stench of dead body is unbelievable there will be an outbreak of epidemic at some point there is all kind of problems with keeping law and order in there there are hardly any church left thank god our church was one of the few that that is still standing but it is unbelievable to me that that lies would be said and i am not political i i don't play the political game but as far as i'm concerned i'm a bahamian and if it's one thing that we should be all about is looking after bahamians and I'm, I'm i'm frustrated and extremely angry about what is going on if anybody is have family members in abaco i'm telling you now get them out by whatever means necessary i'm i'm glad that most of our persons are out of Abaco from our church and I'm hoping that, that that the rest can come out shortly we have to regroup and we have to get back in there to carry as much uh, uh, things that we can water food supplies um, whatever else we need um, the, the bridge the Abaco connecting little Abaco to to mainland has been destroyed even um, they've been having some difficulties getting from Cooperstown into Treasure Key area my wife and I had to stay in a uh, in in a car for for several hours while the, we watched our the, our house tumble down in the front of us, and we had to dash to another house and spend seven to eight hours to 220 plus miles per hour with our winds, just holding and praying on for their life. And we spent the night in the car. Thank God for one of our neighbors who came over and took us in and gave us a dry place. The only thing we left Abaco with was the clothes on our bodies and our passports. And thank God we had our passports because if we didn't have the passports and if we didn't have the $75 per person to pay to get off the island, we would have still been on the island today. I don't understand that for the life of me. I don't know who's listening, but I hope the whole of the Bahamas is. And I pray that all those who are listening to me will share the video as much as they can. Sandy Point, South Africa, if you can hear me, there's nothing in Marsh Harbor. Nothing there to support you. I'm not Abaco. If you can hear me, there's nothing there to support you. I I just got a hot meal for the first time in five days when I landed here last night after being in Treasure Key from eight nine o'clock in the morning, standing on the line with a whole lot of people, hundreds and hundreds of people, all trying to get on the plane, only to find out from Bahamas Air that we had to pay to get out. Thank God for Western Air. Thank God for Western Air. I don't know who owns Western Air, but sir, may the blessings of the Lord be on you and, and your company for reaching out. You didn't have to load the planes up with people to get them out, but you were there. And, and we give God praise and glory for you, sir. I pray. And again, let me end by saying I am not political. I never subscribe to political parties. Anybody that knows me knows me well enough that they've never seen a PLP or FNM flag on my car or my on my clothes. I've never attended any of the rallies. I do my best to stay neutral because as far as I'm concerned, I much must reach all men and all women at all times. Uh, it's all about souls. But I am very upset about what took place and I hope and pray that the government will change its course and do whatever they can to get our people, our Abaconians, off the island as soon as possible. God bless you and I pray uh, if you have uh, any means of getting stuff to Abaco, please, water, food, whatever, whatever you can, do whatever you can, but most of all, Please try and help our Abaconians to get off as quickly as possible. God bless you, and we are praying for you. Yeah, good afternoon, Mama. My name is Marvin Campbell. 
I'm a victim of hurricane Dory. I've been living on them for a year and I've never experienced nothing so dramatic in my life. The shelter I was in, they went just to blow off. Another shelter. When I reached to the government clinic, I stayed in the government clinic like for three, two days. Someone go for the rest of my children. I only need to save one. You know my children over there die. You know my people still missing. Oh hey, the government need to do something, and they need to shape it up. Because whatever they tell in the nation is pure fabrication. I don't know. 